Hey guys, I'm super psyched to announce I got my first sponsor, Santa Cruz Skateboards. It's such a freaking dream. I can't believe I finally got sponsored by a skateboard company, even though it's not for my skating, <laughs> it's for my speaking. But I've been a skater since 1982 when I was 12 years old. I'm so honored. This company was based on punk rock and art. I actually found them in 1983. The Jim Phillips Screaming Hand and the Jeff Kendall Board, which actually posted a picture of me skating the original model on my Instagram recently. And I actually think there's a reissue of it right now. So many amazing designs from the 80s. This company stepped up. They gave me my 20% off code. My code is NHSTOBY. Go to NHSFunFactory.com. USA citizens only. One per customer. Santa Cruz products only. And you can't combine this offer with others. It expires on March 10th at 12 midnight. Santa Cruz Skateboards, thank you so much. This is such a dream for me to come true. I finally got sponsored by you, by a company I looked up to and admired since a child. I really appreciate your support, and uh, I look forward to working with you moving forward. Thank you, everybody, for listening. What's up, everybody? Welcome to the One Life, One Chance podcast. I'm your host, Toby Morse. Uh, I have a special guest today. I'm not at my house in my kitchen. I'm actually at a studio. Um, he's not only one of my closest friends, he's also one of my favorite songwriters. Um, a true musician, a true artist in all sense of that word. Um, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to my podcast, Mr. Tim Armstrong. <laughs> Man. <laughs> he's got a guitar too. <laughs> Thank you, brother. You're welcome. It is good to be here. Thanks for having, thanks for being here, Tim. Uh, I'm, I'm yeah. excited. I'm, a, I'm, I'm you know, we're doing like an interview interview with H two O, and it's it's turned into like a uh, part one, two, and three. And you are a big part of H two O's history, not only as helping us get signed, but also just as a friend. Um, yeah. Especially me and you were super close. Yeah. Um, we we like uh we connected immediately our, our energies. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I was trying to figure out the first time we met you, and I, I know we discussed this before on your radio show, but to the listeners here, if I have any yet. Um, I'm pretty sure we met in City Gardens at the Sick of It All show, and I think that was 94. I'm not sure what, which record you guys were touring on or Sick of It All was, but I'm pretty sure that's the first time we met. Yeah. City Gardens. That's the first time we met, but um, it was it, I'd, I'd heard about you, you know. Okay. Through the, me, uh, me, me personally as a roadie? or yeah, just, just I heard that, like Sick of It All's <laughs> roadies and all that. Okay. Then, uh, <laughs> but it was interesting when you guys were like, you, you guys were... um. All together in that in the in the bathroom. Yeah, remember that? Yeah, this is a kind of a yeah. If it was, that's the first time we kind of met you, New York had this like whole I don't know, it was a kind of a stigma. But for you guys, you we hadn't really met yet. You know what I mean? I think that was that day. Yeah. I, I, I think you guys did a couple shows with Sick of It All that with you that weekend or something, right? Was that the first album Rancid tour? Or was it Let's yeah, that Go? Was, that was no, that was self titled and um. Yo, let's, let me look at you. Hold on. Yeah, it was our first tour. And um, I'd been writing sick of all letters. Okay. And, and I was a fan of all the East Coast hardcore. That's what I was going to ask. Like, yeah. Where, where did that. Yeah. So you're just a fan of New York hardcore before you get to meet anybody. So, yeah. How'd you find out about that scene? Um, well, I was in the, the, the New York hardcore from the, you know, as, as, as early as like Agnostic Front. Okay. And then uh, I was falling out of all those bands. And then, uh, of course, the Cormags and. Uh, and the Revelation was making all those great records. Yes, and, classics. Um, I I bought all those records. I love those records. And um, Sick of All, Alleyway Crew. Yeah, <laughs> that's a bad record. Yes. Um. But then we ended up. Uh, um. Hold, hold. Had you been to New York before that, Tim? C can I get a cup of coffee? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, I'm sorry. Tim's gonna get coffee real quick. All right, stand by. Stand by. I'll I'll, um, I'll keep talking though. If you want, yeah. Let me uh, let me make a cup of coffee. Okay, yeah, okay, fine. Cool. All right, I'll pause it. Yeah, so I have, I have... yeah, we're back from the coffee right now. Get you know, get um, afternoon black coffee, which I, I don't drink. I sh if I do drink coffee, I get um, super jittery. I, I have to go to the bathroom really fast, and I actually take a nap after. It, it go. It makes me really fucking. I don't yeah. know. Some people just just drink it like, like Rusty drinks like I don't know four to five cups a day. He's a big. How many coffees do you have a day? Um, well, I have three cups a day, but each cup ha has four shots of espresso. Wow. So we're talking about three strong cups. Yeah. But That's I pace myself, man. I drink, you know, you can't, you can't drink like that all day long. Yeah. I don't know how people do that and they go to sleep at night. Is it hard, is it hard to fall asleep? I have one in the morning. Okay. Then one in the afternoon and then one like late afternoon. Okay. 
but it doesn't affect like when it's time to be like all you're used to it now. Obviously, yeah. your body's used to it. No, nah, no, nah, I, I, I sleep like a baby. But the thing is, you gotta drink a lot of water. Oh yeah, stay hydrated. Don't forget that. Yeah, because it's a di it's a diuretic. Is that what it's, called, what it's called? I'm not a doctor. Yeah, <laughs> I thought you were a doctor. Um, um, let's get so let's get back to what we're talking about. So we went to City Gardens. It's sick of it all. Rancid shows. The first time we met you guys, you had already been uh, listening to the hardcore stuff in Revelation. All the Revelation seven inches, which are fucking amazing. And like from from afar, actually getting into this music before you met anybody from the actual bands, correct? Mm -hmm. And so that was your first time meeting. Um, and that was like, a, and we weren't really sure how it was gonna go. Yeah, it was 1993. Yeah, and we're East Bay, and we're playing with the. Uh, the great sick of it all in mm -hmm. New Jersey. Yeah, City Gardens was ill. Yeah, and uh, yeah, it was a great place. Yeah, and um, but when, once we met you guys, man, it was like instant friendship, instant friendship and family. Yeah, and we've all been inseparable since, you know. Yeah, you it's, and I especially connected. Yeah, man, it's it's crazy because yeah, then yes, yeah, so we met you that met you at that that show, and then after that, it seems like we're always seeing you guys in New York. Like the Wetlands was another place. Where, um, well, I saw your first performance. Yeah. So at the, at the, at the Vail Rancid show at the Wetlands, Rancid was so kind to let me, Tim Shaw from Ensign, Armand and Pete come on stage in front of their crowd and play the song called My Love Is Real, which is... Well, it was, <laughs> it was, it was, first of all, it was fantastic. Thank you. And, and, um, but it was one lyric, right? Yeah, just over was, and over it again. It was yeah. My Love Is Real. <laughs> Pretty much. And then you reiterate it. My love is real. I try to tell myself when I was, yeah, pretty much. And then much. my love is real. But, <laughs> but, uh, wasn't the but, best lyricist? No, 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 no. I mean, you know, you're, you, you still had to grow a little bit. A hundred percent. You weren't Walt Whitman out the gate. No. But you know what? Still ain't, but still you had, you're very talented. Thank you. Um, lyrics is. Oh, my God. 
First of all, you had it was super. I mean, come on, you were so charismatic, you little guy. Like everyone loved loved it. Everyone loved it. Yeah. And we were all like, "Yo, this should happen for real." You guys are backing it, man. It, Hell yeah. yeah. Um, How could we not? You know what I mean? Yeah. Toby, thank you. So that and, was and honestly, you were saying like everyone was fucking like they didn't like people maybe weren't mo- they weren't maybe moving but they had their eyes on you they couldn't you know what i mean like you you had you had the audience's uh attention you, you, they were captivated yeah so we're on stage with this crowd and it's like a, a rancid rancid avail show shout out to avail great band mm-hmm. and i come on stage with the song come love is real where i'm completely screaming i get a nosebleed and i'm just repeating this song and like moshing around i think lars might have dived onto tim shaw because there's a picture i could I'll show you guys later of him on top of Tim on the on the floor, and we just played this one song. Like it was so, just... so. Let me ask you a question. Yeah. Were you nervous before you before it started? Kind of. You know, I've always been the guy that likes to do wild shit in front of people, so I, I guess I wasn't. I was a little nervous because before I had done it with like Sick of It All on their stage, or like I think a Bio has a show, but not at a Rancid show. And yeah, I was a little bit nervous, and we did it, and it was really fun. And just, I was like. This is awesome. I want to do this. And what's funny about that show is that you can hear that song at the end of our first album that Lars is like, FH2 O, brand new record coming on Epitaph. Like, just joking. Yeah. Like, you almost foresaw the future of what was going to happen. And um, that's pretty awesome to have it actually recorded and some photos of it. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. So, so that, uh, yeah. So, from then, from did then on. Did you know after like, you, when you did that, were you like, man, I could do this? Like what, yeah. was going, what was going on through your head? Through my head, I was like, this is awesome. I'm actually going to, I, I want to do something, actually maybe sing about some real things and not just ex-girlfriend that broke my heart. But I was like, yeah, I love this. I love being on stage. This is, this is awesome. Yeah. That was like the first real audience they kind of played to. Can I ask about those lyrics real quick? Sure. Okay. So my love, <laughs> no, for real, my love is real. Yeah. So what you, you, you were, you were. Was it a, like a, a. I've never broke this song down before. Was it a ever, um, was it an inner monologue? Or were you actually communicating? You know what I mean? It's, a, Was it's, it? a, it's about an ex-girlfriend who cheated on me and broke my heart. And the song's called I Try to Tell Myself I Know My Love Is Real, but then she went away. I knew my, I don't even remember the lyrics, but it's basically saying that I had all this love for you, and you shit on me, and you cheated on right. me, you broke my heart, basically. But initially, it was just those words, right? Yeah, it was pretty repetitive. And um, It's pretty bad, actually, thinking about it now, as far as just the same thing over and over again. But it would build up really hard, and i get super excited. My love! You know, it was a sl- yeah. and it break down. My love is it gets super high. I don't know what the fuck that song came from. I think Pete wrote it actually. I just don't know where it came from, and it just ended up being nothing. The sound of my band, it sounded nothing like H two O because then we put our seven inch out. We had like a pop song on there, and with people like, what the fuck? Like, I don't know yeah. what went from that to like the actual sound of H two O because we really had no direction. It was just a joke at that point, you know? Yeah. I was just a roadie guy. Like, here's, here's a goofy roadie guy that's going to come sing this song. His nose might bleed. And he might but, shit his pants. But, but look who you, love. you had Armand and Pete. Sick. Come on. So that was to start there. Yeah. And, He's like played bass too a couple times. And, and um, yeah, so so it, it, to, to, I thought it was like, don't laugh, but I was like, man, this might be like kind of like some bad brain shit. Wow. The first thing I thought. That's awesome. Yeah, I guess the music was a little. A little bit. Yeah. Cause it wasn't like super fast. Cause no, it's like a slower Bad Brain song. Dun, 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 yeah, fuck. This is the first time I've ever t- talked about the song, and I'm psyched we're talking about. It. Yeah, I mean, there were more. I I only remember just "My Love Is Real" lyrics. You had other lyrics in there, yeah. Oh, I didn't know. Cause when she went away, I, I told myself my love is real. I don't even remember the lyric. I just, I honestly kind of blacked out when I did that song because I went so crazy and I didn't sing the right way. So my face was red, my veins were popping, my nose was bleeding. I was it was really dangerous actually that song. Cause I go so intense. <laughs> <laughs> I would go so intense on it. I don't know. Anyway, that be so that. So now this now now you know like uh, we're talking you know twenty 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 something years down the road. Have you kind of honed in that energy, or can you still tap into that my love is real energy? You know I, what I mean. I, I, ta- I can tap. I can tap into that energy without losing my voice. Yeah. Without getting winded. With actually trying to keep a note in other in our other songs, I have that same energy. Yeah. But that I've never played that song for twenty years. Right. You know, I because I I think I tried to do it, and we actually had more than one song, and I think I probably blew my voice. 
at the beginning because it was super intense. But, that, you know? that, but let, let me ask you, so that was, that was seriously your first time you'd performed on stage? What, with you guys? Yeah. In the real crowd? Yes, 100%. Wow. Yeah. You're a natural. Thank you, man. No, for real. Um, like, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. That was, uh, fuck, I got, to, I got to see that. That's cool. It's I'm a moment in history, that. yeah. Yeah, right? that's cool. Well, th thank you for the opportunity, too, because to just put us on stage in front of a crowd waiting to see you guys was, we pretty much opened up for you guys one <laughs> song. So I think it was after a veil. Yeah. The crowd was like, what the fuck is this? <laughs> and then, shit, if some kids were at that show and liked us and followed us after that, thank you. And if some kids didn't, but, I, I understand why. But the reason why I love it so much, that that performance, and I, I, I it is, um, it represented, like, how we were with each other. You know what yeah. I mean? Like, we're just having fun. Well, Rance is headlining, I guess, but we don't give up. You know, we're, our, our friends are going to jump on stage before us. Like, there's a sense of funness, you know, yeah. with, with us. And that we just goof around all the time. Yeah, I, I love that, too. And I love the fact that, like, we weren't, you guys weren't worried about shit. I wonder if these guys are going to like it or not. You're like, yo, this is our boy, mm -hmm. and we're going to let him go out there and do his thing, and yeah. we, we enjoy it. And hopefully <laughs> they enjoy it. You know exactly. what I mean? Like, I, I love that. I appreciate it. So that's a big... That's a big moment, so um, I appreciate that. Um, and because people forget, like, you gotta have fun on the road, you know. Like, we always have fun, and you guys not take yourself I so mean, seriously. Yeah, like the first time I met you guys, you guys were goofing around. Totally, like, you all running around, right? Like, like Being crazy, like, yeah. And, and you guys are crazy, and, yeah. And we're all, you know, Lars is so fucking funny, you know. Totally. So Lars is like a comedian. So Rance is always laughing. Like yeah, we're, we're and then when we're making records with Brett Gerwitz, we're they're both those guys are telling jokes. Yeah, like they go, Brett will tell a joke, and then Lars will tell another joke, and then Brett will tell a back joke. Back to back, yeah, yeah, they go, and I think that's important, man, to like you know to get you know put work in and 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 be serious about your art. But you can also, be professional, but but have fun. Yeah, and like I think taking yourself too seriously is kind of boring too, and I think yeah. you lose. Like you said, the fun of it, because we're supposed to be doing this for fun. Yeah, That's obviously. But well, you don't want to lose that sense of, of of joy, you know. Yeah, I think also, um, I think if you're not, I, th I can tell the bands that are not having fun and are just going through the motions, or the, they're like too serious or too business or whatever, yeah. and you can feel that. Like the crowd can feel that, and the fans can feel that when they're not just having fun; they're just doing it for whatever reason exactly. they're doing it for. You know what I mean? Like. I know. I, I want to. I don't want to play when it's not fun, and I don't want to do it when it feels like a job. No. Obviously, it's great to make a living off what you do and what you love. That's amazing. That's, that's a blessing. But um, and to get to play music with your like your brothers, your best you friends, know, and your best friends. I mean, yeah. when when I'm up there with with Rancid, it's like that's the safest place on the planet Earth for me. There ain't no problems up there. I got Matt Freeman over here. I got Lars over there. <laughs> yeah. You know, and like and Brandon and like you got we, your brothers. And my brothers, it's like. And people are like, yo, punk rock stage is the safest place on the planet. I'm like, yeah, for me it is. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, like, and it's always been that way, you know, with with Rancid, you know. Yeah, and I I, and I love like the um, like you did for us the bootstraps theory where you, you you always look out for the younger bands and bring them along for the ride and and and, do, and we'll get to that point was when you did that for us and a lot of bands is like look out for the underdogs and the other bands coming up and I love that you know what I mean like yeah. more bands should do that. There's so many bands that just only focus on their shit and getting how uh, far they need to go without fuck everybody else. But you guys are never like that. Um, so I'm going to fast forward after that. So after that, obviously we became friends. It was back and forth. was sick of it all as a roadie to the West Coast, seeing you guys and back and forth. And yeah. I hadn't really started my band yet. And then we made this four song demo that uh, Walter Schreifel was produced actually at Don Fury Studio. And we had this demo that was out. And then you guys have been really had really supporting the H2O with me and, I, and yeah, that um, was a great demo thank you i loved it so we had a four song demo out and it's funny rusty brought this up and think about it now it's crazy because you guys invited us to the studios electric lady studio on 8th street you guys are recording out come the walls with brett gerowitz yeah not knowing that was going to be one of the greatest records fucking ever my favorite record and what it was going to do for the history of music not even kissing your ass it's speaking the fucking facts and you guys invited us there to play some songs for brett <laughs> and if you think about it now, Rusty's like, why the fuck? And Rusty said it to be like, why the fuck would you give it, even give us a second to even listen to a demo? You're making fucking out come the wolves. But you guys even know what record you guys even know what you guys are making at that point. You're making another Rancy record, yeah. which but, turned out to be out come the wolves. You know what I mean? But, like, but, but that, but yeah, thank you, brother. But by that time, you were our brothers, man. Like yeah. we loved you guys. Yeah, you know I, what I mean? I appreciate like it that. was like my love was real. Could have been about us. 
Like we would love you, man. Yeah, yeah. We do, man. <laughs> I, you know what I mean? Yeah. So we were like, whatever, you know, we can do for our brothers that we care about. So and you, you know, we had your back, you had our back. Like, I felt like we were. We, it was like a family, you know. Yeah, it is. It a was. It is still. It is. You know? and, but it's like so going. But Rusty was like thinking about it now. It's like we fucking walked in there. Like, hey guys, <laughs> Ranson invited us. They're making Outcome the Wolves, <laughs> which is Outcome the Wolves that people know today. And like, here, check out a demo, dude. We got four songs. And Rusty said, like, he even told Brett, he's like, you know, he, he listened to the songs he liked. He said, and Brett said, kind of like, basically, in his own words, you need to make, work, make some more songs. You know, like, work on your craft a little bit more, right. you know? And, um, and, we, and, we, and we appreciated that, actually, like, honest opinion. And, you know, and we went and did it. We did our first album, and that was on Blackout Records. And um, yeah, that that's, record. Yeah, that's a good record. But I love how Brett Gerowitz is, how he's so honest. Yeah, me too. He's very kind. Yeah. He's so goddamn smart. Yeah, but he'll 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 kick it to you. He'll, he'll keep it. He he keeps it real. Like, one hundred. Yeah. yeah, he does. And so he, and he, that's why he's produced like every record, you know, for us. We yeah, love that about him. Genius. And so he gave us that. He listened to the songs. He gave us the honest opinion, and we went back. We're like, cool. And we did our thing. And then our first album came out, and you know, once again, Rancy got. I think it was you. You got that. You got the album to him, and we went back to him. Like, okay, we're ready. And then that's when we yep. we signed the deal with him, and so. I mean, from, from 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 Wetlands to our demo to our seven inch to that record, you guys always had our back, and you know I want to thank you. And you, it's, you are the reason. You guys are the reasons that you know Brett Gerwitz even signed. We're the first New York hardcore East Coast band ever to sign Epitaph. Yeah, and that was a, fucking. That's, that's a big. That's really cool. Yeah, it was fucking amazing. But like, in our eyes, we were like, "Yo, this is." They're like, "Toby's the real deal, man. That's like a real New York hardcore kid." You know what I mean? Like, yeah. You Thank were you, like Brad. it was your life. It is my life. Yeah, it was. You know, my life. yeah. And it, it was not like so. Like we, I was always pitching that about about you. You know, I how, appreciate how, it. How, I appreciate like, you guys believing in us. And, and I you, just and you love punk rock and hardcore yeah. as much as we love punk rock and hardcore. Yeah, I mean that's sure. the main connection we had. Always, hundred percent. That we were like all about it. Yeah, <laughs> you know what I mean. Yeah. We were all in. You know, yeah, Toby. So, yeah, hundred percent. And I don't think that many people really know the like how did, how does Rancid know sick of it all back then? How do you guys connect with the New York hardcore scene? But you said it like you were like buying those Revelation Seven Inches, and you you're a fan of actually music, and you support music, so you listen to all like different yeah. types of it, hardcore and punk. Oh hell know? yeah! And it, and yeah, I mean it wasn't our style of punk rock; it was their style. And yeah. It was, and it, but I loved it, and it was. Um, I mean, so, there's so many great bands on Revelation and New York hardcore in general. Yeah, is one of the greatest musical genres of all time. Thank you, man. And I, I think that that's the first. I think that's like the first like West Coast and East Coast connection, really. That really kind of set the tone for you know the West Coast and East Coast bands kind of playing together. You know what I mean? If you think about it, because it was the Bouncing Souls too on the East Coast. They always played together. They were ep epitaph. Like that was like the connection right there was a rancid sick of it all thing. I really do think so. Um, the first thing, you know. Um, and then fast forward to Outcome the Wolves comes out. And um, I think we start doing some shows with the guys there. I have, I have a bunch of tickets. Those, but you guys started putting us on some shows back then. Mm -hmm. um, and then the Time Bomb video, which everybody knows. If you don't know, I'm, I'm the guy in the Time Bomb video, but I don't have a... Um, uh, the outfit on the black i don't have any of that stuff on me i'm just me yeah. and i came to the video shoot <laughs> it's also funny too and i'm, I'm gonna kick real reality if you, we, can, we can cut off if you want i'll kick real reality but that video shoot was right by abc no rio and these punk rockers were trying to protest it but when they got invited to be in the video they got in the video so we can take that i just want to yeah. kick that factual they yeah. were trying to pro cap but then when they got invited to me they were oh yeah i'll be in the video but two seconds later they're against it it's just funny how these kids are but and anyway. another thing, um, that's pretty factual, e e right? That's Tim? factual. <laughs> and and Isaac had beef with oh, with with a graffiti kid that was in there. And oh then, yeah, that's and I, right. They came up to me and they said, uh, "Can you your friend not kill this uh, this extra?" Oh, that's right. There and was I was like, I walk out. By then, I was he was already my brother. Like, oh, you guys are my brothers already. So I was like, "E man, what's going on, bro?" Like, <laughs> I'm trying to do a music video, bro. Like. I ain't trying to like, you know, let's just get through this video. Yeah. And then what you got to do, you got to do, but like. So he was it, probably he, hired he, by like the production or something. And to he, be, and yeah, and he was cool. He said, yeah. yeah, yeah, got you. I go, yeah, don't, you know, homie, like we just, like I ain't trying to get in like some shit right now. Let's just try to do this video right now and get out, through it. <laughs> he was cool. I so that, I know nothing about any of that beef or drama. Dude, I was never, yeah. <laughs> but the graffiti guy must have been hired by somebody. Like, But but, but he listened to me, man. He's that, yeah. you know, he was cool. 
Well, that was a super that was a super amazing day where we just came to support our friends shooting a video. And they're, they're, oh shit! All of a sudden, they put me as the main dude in there. I was like, holy! It was an amazing day. So many different friends were in that video. Um, I was honored to be in there. It was so cool. You guys did that. Um, I mean, you know, we had played ABC in Rio like yeah. a year before and, yeah. and on the same label. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know what I mean, like it's just you know we're doing our thing. I know. And, I, I never, and, I never, and I talked to us to Brett. Like I never understood that. Like. For me, if I, I had a band that I love and they became successful and, and got to a more audience, I'd be so happy for them. Yeah. I never understood yeah, that. I'm like, the same too, but I understand that. I it mean, always bothered me, dude. It was a confusing stuff. time because everyone was, you know, punk rock is so important to everybody and everyone has their own relationship with it. So, But they kind of wanted to be like, I just want the band to play to me and my five friends in the basement. Yeah. I, I don't want them, other people to like them. I yeah, found yeah. them first. But I mean, yeah, yeah, and I, you know, we're just and we're just doing what we've been doing for like a long time. You guys have always at, been the at, same people. I know, but this, it's, you know what I mean. Like, by the time you know, we've been doing this since the '80s and it's yeah. like mid '90s, and and you know, but it. I mean, Operation Ivy started in '89, right? '87. '87. Okay. We broke yeah, so up in '89. Be, okay, broke up. So you started in '87, ended in '89. Oh shit, that's right, that's right. I heard you that got before. garage already have a plain time. <laughs> I know that line. <laughs> I'm like such an idiot. Oh shit, another line. Okay, sorry. It's bro. all good. Um. But I never understood that, like, but it's funny, like, I don't know, I just never understood it. All that stuff bothered me, like, back then, all those, whatever label you were on or whatever, they didn't, didn't, it was all about that, not your music and your message and you as a person. Yeah. And, like, y y fuck, man, if, if anybody can do what they love and, and play music that's real, that they live by, yeah. like, what's wrong with that? I support that. I don't understand how people are so, like, anyway, enough of those people. Anyway, so the time bomb video was amazing. Got to be in there. It was fucking awesome. Um, um, and then after that, um, one of the stories I want to bring up that was pretty amazing is that, and the, the world probably knows about it, but I remember opening up for Rancid at the Roseland, and I have a Madonna tattoo on my arm, and I remember opening up, and then my, and my wife looking at me on the stage, like, pointing, and she was pointing at Madonna, was sitting there, and thing, because she came to see you guys. That was, like, a crazy fucking deal. I could, it was an amazing yeah. time. And then meeting her backstage after that, just, like, yeah. it's, it's like your band was doing so well and so loved, and every single person came around trying to fucking get a piece but you guys obviously stay with Brett Girl with your boy mm. and I, that's so much that that shows you right there what kind of people you are as a real family and friends you know what I mean like that was amazing dude that was Thank a crazy you. time for you guys it was crazy yeah but Brett you know I always look at Brett like as like punk rock number one like yeah he's been doing it longer than us oh gee man yeah and he makes the best sounding records yeah and he, and he loves us yeah like he has he has rancid tattooed on his arm I know, you know? Man, so I know. like and we love him, and he's one dude that we all listen to. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. Because Rance is a lot. There's a lot of, of respect there. A lot of respect. You know, we're talking big personalities, right? Lars Fredrickson, Matt Freeman. Yeah. But we all listen to Brett, you know, and we take him serious. And um, he could be straight with us too, like you know. Um, but I, it's such a fun. I love recording with Brett so much. Whenever Rance gets together, we made nine records now with Brett. Yeah. It's fucking and, crazy. And when we we get together, it's like um. It's like a like a like a celebration, you know what I mean? For yeah. real, like almost like a like a a getaway or or like a vacation where we all get together and, and we all look forward to it. It's like a family reunion, yeah. You know what these guys, you know. But but it it says a lot about him as a person and you guys as people also that that you never let that you stay with him the whole time through all that crazy shit, mm -hmm. fucking Madonna sending pictures, it's just all that shit, man. Just yeah. fucking get schmoozed and she's, by and she's everybody. super cool and a lot of great yeah. people loved us. But Brett was like. He's he's our guy. Like we got a producer, you know, and it's a classic artist producer relationship that's lasted twenty five years. And don't fix what ain't broke, too. Exactly. Oh uh, yeah, exactly. You know what I mean? So like, and I'm honored to have him producing us. You yeah. Know? And uh, and it's a, we got a, it's such a comfortable thing. Like you know, I get in there, I'll sing the vocal three times, begin top to you know, I go I do the whole track three times. Yeah. And I go get I go outside and uh, go get a coke or whatever, and he he comps it. He'll pick one of my vocals and maybe fly in a couple words here and there, but that's it. And that's and that's it. I, I, Damn, I didn't I, realize that. Yeah, that's how we do it. It's so, so good. I like I Wow. And I trust him. Yeah. Like I just I'll just sing it three times. Maybe he'll come in after he comps and goes, try one more and I'll try one more. And I go on and leave. He just I just let him deal with all that. That's awesome. Yeah, there's a lot of trust in him for I, sure. I trust him. And and he know and he knows like he knows you, and he knows he knows the sound of Rancy. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? He knows you guys so well inside and out. So what was so? And I love all our records we've made with him. Yeah. You know? So your first couple records, though, um, how long did those? Like, how do you remember how long it took to record well, the, the first, first one? Album? Can I tell you about the first one real quick? Yeah, please. 
the first we were we were in Operation Ivy East Bay band, East Bay guys, right? Yes. And Lars was South Bay, but but he was on the first record. So yeah, we get signed to Epitaph, and I'm on the inner, I'm on the, uh, I'm on Telegraph Avenue, and a friend of mine was like, "Yo, they're talking about you guys signing to Epitaph on the computer." <laughs> the and I'm computer like, back then, and I'm crazy. like, "What?" And this is like a. Cal Berkeley had like a computer room. Oh shit! So, so and I never, school. I never been to Cal. I mean, I'm never, I, you know, I'm, I was hanging out on, on Telegraph as I did every day forever. Yeah. And I go in, I read it, and it says like, Rance is selling out the East Bay to sign a big Epitaph Records," <laughs> which I loved Epitaph Records, and I love Revelation. I loved Epitaph too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I love Bad Religion and Pennywise. Yeah, yeah. And all that that Family, whole sound. Yeah. And we were the first band to sign on Epitaph that was in L.A. By the way. You were okay. the first East Coast band. Rance was the first band that wasn't an L.A. band to oh, sign shit, up. I know, so we, I know we have that. our own little milestone. Wow. So I, I read this Facts, thing, people. And I tell my friend, like, yo, who wrote this? And she's like, no, I don't know who wrote it. I go, what do you mean? I'm going to go, I'm going to go, I'm going to roll, I'm going to step, I'm going to step to him. And I'm like, what the fuck you going to say about me? You don't even, we haven't even made the record yet. And they're saying, it sounds, it sounds like bad religion. New Rancid record sounds like bad religion. And you haven't even made it yet. We even signed? made the record and are talking about it. Oh, I said, and I didn't even know what the internet was. That's, that's OG trolls. Yeah. OG trolls. And I'm like, well, who? I go, what's the name? Like, she's like, I don't know the name. You don't know? I go, what do you mean? Where do they live? She goes, I don't know. Because internet. Yeah. It blew my mind. Yeah, faceless fucking. Like this is in the end, in like '92, early early '93, before we made the record. Wow. And I was like, fuck this shit. So, <laughs> the first record, Brett produced it, but I didn't want his name on it. I didn't even know that. Yeah, he did. Oh shit! I was like, why? Because you were kind of bummed at the whole. I way. didn't. I was so like, and I made a. I, I know, like the bad taste in your mouth. Maybe the. I don't know. I was listening to the last time I ever listened to the trolls okay. on the internet. Seriously, I was probably I thinking. You. I'm back in my head. I'm like, yeah, you know me. Like, you're off the grid. I believe. I'm, you, I don't give a fuck. I love that. Like I love my. my I respect know. that. I'm envious that actually. Thank like you, brother. So 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 I was like, yo, maybe we just do it ourselves. And Brett was like, well, I, you know, I can do it, and and and. We use we know we use West Beach Studios, which is his setup, his studio. Yeah, Donald spot. Cameron engineered it, his engineer. So it was a Brett Gerwitz production record. Him and Jay Bentley sang on it. Like it was a rancid Brett Gerwitz collaboration without his name technically on it. Wow. And then and then Out Come the Wolves was the only other record that his name wasn't on it. It wasn't? Uh because uh it was Jerry Finn. But he oh, did all shit, the vocals. That's right, we ran dude. out of time. I mean, we don't care. I just realized because I said we went to Electric Lady and you were doing Out Come the Wolves. We, interesting, we right? ran out of time. With Jerry, and he went on to the Jawbreaker record, and Jerry was talented and great. And that's that was Jerry's piece. first production, by the way. Jerry Finn's first band he produced was Rancid. Oh, shit, I didn't know that either. Yeah, he mixed the Green Day record. So, Brett did the first one and Let's Go? Brett did Let's Go, and Al he did all the vocals for Out Come the Wolves. Okay. So we took the tapes okay. to New York with no vocals done. Wow, okay. We, we Zero vocals. And we have Andy Wallace book to mix. Andy Wallace. So we're like recording vocals at Electric Ladyland and turning them in the next day to be mixed. I mean, we were under the gun. Holy shit. So when you guys were hanging out with us. Yeah. It was so that's another thing. Yeah, you guys are under all that stress, and you invite us to the studio. That's fucking awesome. <laughs> Holy shit. Yeah, but that, I didn't even but, know that. Yeah, it's, and Brett did the, uh, you know, he's, he's uh, and we, you know. Um, wow. Yeah, and we'd done, like, Let's Go in four days. So, I was going to ask so you So Jerry that. Finn was like, you know, a month with, at Fantasy will be enough for a rancid, but it just took longer than we expected. So he more than really a month. Jerry Finn was very meticulous with the bass and the drums. Okay. Which is great. Yeah. So kind of like, Alcohol Lewis really has two producers. It has a Jerry Finn production, which is the classic Jerry Finn production. Okay. Super strong, super, super, super tight. And then Brett Gerwitz did the vocals. Wow. So That's it's kind of like a dream yeah. team, production team. But Brett didn't get production credit, but he completely produced the, all the vocals for sure. Wow. And sang on them. Yeah, that, that's Because him and Lars are like the, the harmony guys. You know? Yeah, yeah. But then he'd be like, like Tim, uh, cool. Hey, Tim, you could come in. <laughs> Lars, go out there. You know what I mean? Like, I'm like, I'm not a harmony dude. Yeah. You know. You, you guys, you guys compliment each other perfectly, though. Oh, thank you. It's really, it, it's you really do. Um, yeah, I love singing with him. Lars is like my Rusty. Um, yeah, exactly. <laughs> I love Rusty's voice too. <laughs> yeah, Rusty's fuck. Yeah, Rusty's. But it's like you two together, you know. It's yeah, cool. it's yeah. different. It's by himself. Um, and then who, and who produced the, on the life on, life on weight? That's where you guys went to Jamaica. You went to England, right. you right? You went everywhere for that, right? Yeah. Well, that large, that took a long time, right? Brecker would sequence that record. Okay. We, we, this is kind of, I mean, we, he was in, re, he was in rehab. Yeah. We he talked was, about that too, about what worked earlier than that, but he was in e impact. And I, I brought him a tape of 40 songs and wow. he picked them. 
and organized. He picked the songs and put them in a sequence. Why was he in rehab? Forty songs. He, in rehab, he That's sequenced pretty... Rancid. Wow. That's and crazy. He'd, too. He'd, I didn't know he'd, that he'd been recording us off and on, but in and out of. I mean, I mean, I don't want to get, I don't want to talk out of school, but he was in and out. He'd gone to like a lot of rehabs. Yeah, we talked about that in the thing the other day a little but bit. A, but, but yeah, so if he talks about yeah, it, yeah, because when he signed us, he he just went to he just went to rehab for the first time in '97 when he just signed us. The album was about to come out. Yeah. So that was like, I went to go see him. He's like, oh, I'm about to do this, and then, yeah. Yeah, Rancis never made a record without him. Yeah. Being involved. Yeah. Heavily. Yeah, he picked the the songs for our, for Life on Wait. That's Sequence amazing, them. man. He kind of because it was kind of all over the place, you know. Yeah, and we I were kind of we though. were like out to sea without a rudder because he was the captain of the ship. It was <laughs> smoking yeah. crack and doing heroin. Yeah, yeah. You know, and it was like and the, now he's been sober since ninety seven. Yeah, think, which is amazing. Yeah, he was man. so yeah he's been sober. He got sober right after that. Yeah, it's awesome, man. I know. How long have you been sober for now? Twenty two years. Fucking amazing, man. A day at a time. It's amazing. I'm going to get to that. Um, okay, so we're going forward to that. Punk's not drugs. Punk's not drugs. <laughs> so wh what would you say, Tim, for you? I know it's like a generic question, but like, what was your first exposure s exposure to punk music? Was it through your brother? Was it, did you find it yourself? Was it a band? Was it yeah. an album? Older you brother, you know, I have, I'm the youngest of... Because my uh, brothers did it for me, for sure. Yeah, you're, but we're both younger brothers. Yeah. No, I have two older brothers. I know, but you're... and you, you're, I'm, the, I'm the baby. You're the baby. I'm the baby. Okay, yeah, yeah. So you're okay. the baby. I'm the baby. It's large as the baby. Okay. Okay. There's something there. I don't know what that means. <laughs> we're all babies. Um, um, but no, we're all younger brothers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. And um, and I got into it really young because my brother was seven years older than me that, and loved punk. Okay. So when I was in like seventh grade, I'm listening to shit that no one's even listening to. I was like, I was like an island on my own. You okay. Know? Even Matt Freeman. I mean, I recruited Matt Freeman and I got him a bunch of records to listen to, you know, that whole thing. Was it eight tracks and just cassettes and shit back then, right? Obviously <laughs> vinyl. Yeah, vinyl, always vinyl. Yeah, eight tracks, but cassettes. Whoa, because uh, eight tracks too. Yeah, we'd listen to eight, like Ramones, Leave Home. On yeah, eight never mind the Bullocks was on it because my brother brought that home mm -hmm. on eight track back then. But my first musical thing was when I was three years old. Uh, Mrs. Jones' song "Rhythm," uh, Brooklyn Hills, or like a like an old school lady, like hip, like a hippie lady. Okay, and would give like music classes, and my brother and I both went to it. Wow, and three? Uh, and we just yeah, from like age three to. Five, and I just sing songs. Wow! I play percussion instruments, and it was my best thing ever. One of my first memories is my mom coming in, like, "We gotta go now," and me crying, like, "I don't want to leave." Wow! Mrs. Jones's house. That's crazy. Yeah. That's awesome. And we just played. We and we had like a set list, like, "Oh, McDonald had a phone," or like, "Knick knack, patty whack, give, give a, a dog, dog a bone,", bone. like yeah. that shit. Like, but it was my best thing ever. So then I went from that to like playing trumpet, and then. Then Holy I went to shit. age twelve. I got guitar. I got guitar. And once I got the guitar, I was like, "Fuck it, this is it." But I've been playing music my whole life. So you I always want to play music. Like I never want to do anything else. You're like, like a real musician, though. You can sing guitar. You probably play bass. You play piano. You said trumpet. You play drums too. I got yeah. I mean, I'm not no Travis Barker. No, I know. <laughs> but, uh, I could do. I could. Get There's only one it. Travis Barker. Yes, sir. Uh, but um, you can play drums. You can keep beat. Yeah. That's amazing. I love too. it. Yeah. It's and I never wanted to do anything but play music my yeah. whole life. That's it. And like, you did it. And you're doing I've it. Done it. I'm still doing it. And so, if, you know what I mean? Like if I if I retired from the music industry right now, I would I'd be like, cool. Play I'd play music all day. You know what I mean? Like yeah. all I want to do is play music. Yeah, you're producing too though, which is great. I yeah, mean. which is also I'm also as a producer, I play music, I sit in with the bands. Yeah, yeah. So we actually did our we did our demos at your house mm -hmm. for FTTW. Yeah. Do you remember that? Yeah, and the record's 20 years next year, which is crazy. We might release the demos, maybe, and let oh, you know. yeah. We did demos at your crib. I remember it was such a great experience. Um, and then we recorded some of that record at Coyote, Coyote Studios because we're like, oh, Rancy recorded um, Summer oh, Life. Summer Life on Wait. Yeah, there. So we're going to go to Coyote Studios. So we did that in Dead of Winter with Brett. It was awesome. Freddie came to Guilty by Association. Like, yeah. all that shit was just awesome. But that's all because of you guys. But, um, yeah, I remember doing the demos at your house and coming to California. But, um, all right, so your exposure was that. For the punk music, and um, was it was it one particular album or just music in general? You love because I mean, you have such a diverse palette. You love country. You, you like you respect country. You yeah. Hip hop, big hip hop, ska, hardcore, punk, everything. You, you have yeah. such a diverse palette. Mm -hmm. Death metal. Were you like a metal fan though? I, I like metal, but a punk was like Ramones, like Rocket to Russia is still like shit. the high watermark of all greatness. Ramones. Yeah, but then I love I do love I love like 
I love like crust and uh, yeah, yeah, and, and, and grindcore, and I, and I love country music. Yeah, um, I I love all every genre has their their great artists, you know. For sure, you know what I mean. Yeah, but I think I think that's what makes you like a well-rounded, like legit mus- musician. You know what I mean? You could you could work with all types of people and and appreciate type all types of music. You know what I mean? I think that's yeah. really thank you, man. Um, just, s- smart to have that. Um, you like when I'm always like if I go into somewhere and I hear music. Sometimes you ever talk to me and I like I space out like I'm not yeah. there. It's I'm hearing like a chord progression. And I, I believe I, you, I man. Visualize the chords. I see them. You know what I mean? Yeah. I always people like. I can't help like that. I've all, like that's always been the case for me. Like when I hear music, I literally tune everything out. You've done that, right? Talk I've to done me. it before, yeah. And, and people think I'm, like I'm being rude. I don't even. I don't hear them. Do you have ideas? When you, is it hard? Your mind spinning at night. We go to bed. You think about ideas a lot. Write shit down. For or? sure. I wake up with a song in my brain all the time. Okay. And I run to my guitar real quick. Like all the time, I dream songs. Damn. Do you do you write shit down or just yeah? Like, I write them down. I do. Yeah. I write them. I write them down. And I got the iPhone. I could record them. Now you can. Yeah. But do you, do you have crazy lyric books from your whole life, probably? Yeah, or? for sure. Fuck, man. Yeah. I um, mean, always write the ideas down. I actually have lyrics. Tim wrote some lyrics. I have them tattooed on my Rancid tattoo because on the Warped Tour, we got um, matching Rancid tattoos, Yeah, which is fucking awesome. And I remember our bus broke down on that tour, too, and we all became like hobos, and I ended up going on you guys' bus. and um, Just fucking awesome memory. So, yeah, I mean, so... What was going to talk about next on here? Oh, yeah. So, yeah, so about, about your diverse palette of music i mean you've produced and written with pink jimmy cliff mm-hmm. and like that's su- that's such a different from what rancid you know what i mean like yeah but every, like i, I think it's saying, amazing like, man every, you know every genre has their jimmy cliff you know? yeah yeah jimmy Cliff, ramones you know every you know and music is uh i mean you know i just i just love all kinds of music you know yeah, you can tell. You can t- you can tell with your music too. Like you have o- other influences, obviously. Like in Rance's music too. It's obviously gonna Rance is gonna have its sound. Like I love Coldplay, but I'm not gonna have any yeah. songs that really sound like Coldplay. I'm inspired yeah. by exactly. other types of music, and and I love. We both love hip hop. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? But um, I can't rap. But I love I love hip hop so much. I know we talk about hip hop a lot, and people I mean, probably, people probably even know even love hip hop, and you like know the different genres and the different like. Yeah eras of it too um and lyrics and i i, I love you have a top five studios, different different um we have a top five dead or alive no nah, it's hard for me to do that it's hard right yeah yeah i tried doing groups like i have a hard groups. time with the, with the with the with the music too doing that it's yeah it's tough it really is tough because it, it's things you like about every it's different yeah. things like each person right? I, mean, I, I can tell you the ramones are my favorite band of all time that's about it that's your number one that's just and then, and then everything else is you know I, I could say that yeah, well, for me, you and the Ramones were my top five American punk band. So, oh, thank you. So, I mean, I feel like you guys were were like the after the Ramones was rancid. Like, so, so all you have is your number one, which is Ramones. You have a number. You have no number one hip hop, like hip hop group. No, it's hard to say because I love all like you know. You like I lo- trap. I love, you I, like I love everything South. from the Cash Money records to the Death Row records. To all the great early East Coast stuff, you know. Yeah. So I am i can't really, I can't do that right now. <laughs> I could talk about hip hop for like two days straight. I know, you. it's funny because when we talked about before, like I was trying to break down to Tim about the music my son's listening to and, and you knew right off the jump like like how slow the beats were and all oh, that yeah. stuff. Like just like the intricacy of like for sure s- the speed of the beats. And like I don't think about shit like that. I just think about it as like the beat, but there's like a style to it, the trap mm-hmm. and the fucking... Um, but but so so fast forward to now, Tim. Like, I don't know I've known you since '93. Mm-hmm. Um, you've done so much amazing things in your life with music, and um, continue to do so. What is like? What is your? What is your? How do you stay positive? And what is your inspiration? And what keeps you staying creative? To keep uh, the passion going. My uh, passion is music. Yeah, it just is. Yeah, it's all. That's all I think about. I dream about it. I mean, I just. It's it's more exciting now than it's ever been. Like, yeah, and you and you listen to new shit too. It's like yeah. you're not like this. I listen to my old shit, right? You listen to oh, for sure. Yeah, because that's where that's where you get that's where you pull creation. Uh, yeah, and, and new genres is music that I haven't you know gone into yet. Yeah, I'm always learning. I just love it so much, and it never grows old, and it's, it's always exciting. I mean, I well, you know me. I'm nine o'clock in the morning. I'm in, I'm recording music. I get yeah. going early. And yeah, I'm doing something fun. 
that I enjoy. And I love I love artists and musicians. They're my you know I get along. I don't really know any actors. All I know is music people. Yeah, I know five hundred music musicians and all different types too. All different types. Um, because they're my. It's like I and I can meet any musician. And with I, I bring up that old guitar right there. And yeah, like we'll, we'll, there'll be a, there'll be a connection. It just is. Yeah. you know. I and think that's that, a that's so that's just a beautiful thing that I've I've been able to do over the years, you know. And I don't take it for granted, you know. Yeah, I, I think that some people when they look at people like, or he like you sit you you're the singer from Rancid, and you're you come from the punk scene that like ki sometimes kids and people have it. They think that you only listen to like this one type of genre, but I think people that know you and are a fan of you and your band, they know that you listen to all types of music. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? They can tell by but the, so the style and the sound. With that said, but the style of music Rancid plays, that is my favorite genre. Yeah. Like, it's, all the music I do love, yeah. and I love it, but that, that, that punk rock, yeah. that street punk and the ska punk rock, that's, that's my favorite music to listen to out of all genres, and that's yeah. the music I play. Like, yeah. you know what I mean? It's not like, yeah. ah, it's something I do. That's no, literally, I know, I know. Ramones, like, that is my favorite yeah. of all the genres. Yeah. And playing punk rock on stage is so freaking fun, as you know. There's nothing like it. There's nothing like playing punk rock. Yeah. There's like, not. It never gets old. Ever. It never gets old. But yeah, I, I know what you're saying, because obviously I love being on stage with H2O. I love playing music with them. But also, I, I, when I'm off tour, I like, I'm going to listen to some Coldplay or some or some hip-hop, because I'm, yeah. I'm hearing that straight for a couple weeks on tour. Yeah, yeah. It, but it's also every time I put on an old record, though, it gives you that you reminisce and you think about the memories of where you were back then. You listen to old, exactly. old punk records, just all the memories of it. It's like I know, and it's it's something that's so. Um, and Rancid songs are over quick, you know, like yeah, three minute, two minutes, and it's like a lot going on. There's a lot of little bits going on, and Matt Freeman live, he's serving something different every night. He's like a jazz dude inherently, like yeah. coming out. Like that's why I met him. He was a jazz guy. He was in a jazz band in high school. He's and an amazing I, bass player, And I recruited player, him into my, my crew, you know. Yeah. I recruited Matt Freeman, and it's every night he's serving something different, man. You never know what you're going to get, and it's With exciting. Him? Yeah, he's so such he a great freestyle player. freestyle shit, yeah. He does, yeah. He, 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 he sticks, he goes off and kind of does a different thing, sometimes depending who's on stage watching him. Huh. Like if Adam over there, I'll be like, what's up with Freeman? <laughs> he's got some, some, what's happening? I look over, it'll be like Fat Mike on the side of stage, like watching. Like, wow. Oh, he's like... But that's exciting, you know. It is exciting. We don't use in ears, so it's like I'm hearing that fucking amp loud as fuck. That's right. You guys don't use in ears. No, Lars is loud as fuck. So they're like a stereo with those two guys. Yeah. I'm right in the middle of the two things. I got my vocals up front with the wedges. I got Matt to the left of me. I got Lars to the right. Brandon behind me. It's like a stereo mix. It sounds incredible. It's yeah, loud as it. fuck and it's yeah. exciting. There's no way that's like that can't get boring. You know what I mean? Yeah. Are your ears good from not when you wear earplugs? Mm -mm. Me either, man. My ears are cool. No, me too. It's just. I mean, oh. we're not we're not like that. We have like half stacks and shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But we're still loud though. Yeah. My, my hearing's cool. Yeah, it's good though because we've been around the music for so long, so many years, and somebody ever get that tender nice. I think I think Adam maybe has it's that. genetic. Um, I'm gonna have to put I, this part in. <laughs> 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 I mean, we talked about a lot of things. What what if you had to name? Could you name your favorite Rancid record? Alk on the Wolves. Yeah, well, the reason good. is because we had done like three records in literally 24 months. We made self-titled Let's Go and Alk on the Wolves 60-something songs in two years. That's crazy. We were just on point. That's like, crazy, we, were just, we just ramped the fuck up. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. We were on the road. We were always together. We were making records on the road. Making you were writing records on, on tour too, right? Yeah, yeah, just always together. Always making records. And then we took a little break and... Uh, I still love Hello Records, but it's it's just it, that was the I think that was our like the the pinnacle of my favorite record. I think yeah, it's fucking it's a flaw. I mean, I have a, obviously have a tattoo. It's a flawless, perfect record. I'm I'm on it to even like even know you guys back then too. And I, it's just cool like that how, how far that record's gone and what it means to people. You know what I mean? You know, I don't know. It's it's pretty fucking amazing. That's Thank you. was was there, was there a certain time, Tim, that you felt like when everything was when you guys started just. You guys tore your ass off and then started becoming bigger and bigger. Was there a time where like, holy shit, like our pro we might be able to do this for a long time? Like this is gonna be a, this could be our this gonna be our life, anything like that, or was there any moment? I never thought about that. All, all I thought about is this is all I wanna do my yeah. whole life is play music. I never thought about that. Like Like holy shit, like this is actually it. people actually like our band and, and I mean honestly they want another record. The more. It's like yeah, I just always play music and I'll be playing music if if 
there were no bands like I just yeah. I, I play music every day, Toby, no matter yeah. what. You yeah. know what I mean? I just and then I'm honored to be able to play with those guys. Yeah, exactly. They're, they're so I mean they're so cool. You were like, gonna great. play no matter what. Yeah, they're so great, those guys. Yeah, I'll yeah. play no matter I mean listen, when I first the first thing I did was when I was sixteen, the band called Contemplations of Death and we were like exploited meets the, probably the Ramones. Yeah. But more exploited. What were they called again? We were called Contemplations of Death. Sick. And we had a song. I just we found the tapes. Oh shit! Yeah, they're dope. They're like they're like. I mean, it's C O D. C O D. We had a song called Pac Man Works for the CIA. Pac Man. Pac Man works for the CIA. Because <laughs> awesome. we're like what 16, 15 you found years the old. Was of that shit? Yeah, I got it. Oh, we shit, found it because we did a East Bay documentary. Okay, and I retrieved it. So I'm gonna. Damn. Um, I'm thinking. Uh, yeah, we. we it, 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 and but the but but the thing is it. We were on a comp, a cassette compilation of, of East Bay bands. came out, I think, January 83. It was called Get Off My Guts. And it's <laughs> Dave Edge's first band from Neurosis, Basic Need. Jesse Op Ivy was in okay. SAG. Um, Tom from Soup was in Blasphemy. So, and I was in Contemplation of Death. So like, it was kind of like a, a, a small little... Like Rosetta Stone or the East Bay, really, you know. Damn, that's crazy. And when that came out and Max Marco reviewed it, um, I was kind of like, "Yo, I made it." Max Marco Wolf. Max Marco was the shit back then. It was the shit, it was and, the it, and, Bible, and, and, yeah. and 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 reviewed my band, our the comp. It was a good on. review of the comp. Yeah, it was like a comp, you know. But named I, you guys on it, the yeah. We were on it, and it, uh, but it was the comp we were on. It was give my guts, and um, they didn't particularly like shout us out, but. Still, they, they talked about the compilation I was on, and that was massive for me because we made that in our in my in my brother's bedroom. There ain't no parents there, no yeah. teachers, nobody telling us what to do. And then the whole and then Max Rock Roll had reach. It was like they people in London could be. Yeah, they shit. were big. That was the shit. Right. So I'm like, yo, I'm I'm 16 years old, and something I did in my brother's base in brother's room that's fucking could awesome. Reach all corners of the planet. Yeah, I mean it was profound, and I don't need nobody. So that that taught me early that was on before the internet too. Before the internet, it taught me like I don't need, we don't need anybody. It's pretty we don't cool. need yeah. all we need is is to make it, and it'll work out. And it's and it's kind of since that's like thirty five years ago. It's it's kind of been fuck. That's kind of been the case. It really has. I man. make it, and it'll work out. I that's, that, 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 that's 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 the definition of PMA, actually. It is that's right. That's pretty fucking PMA, yeah. Because you can, in your mind, you just have to make it happen. It happened. Yeah, and that was so. Like, when did I make it in the music industry? Kind of when I was get off my guts came out in '83, and Max Rock and Roll reviewed know. it. People even know about that band, do they? It was mentioned in the compila- in the in the in the documentary. Okay, but, I yeah. have. I'll show it to you. I have a yeah. I have a copy of Get Off My Guts in mint condition. Wow, would that be released ever now? I don't know, but I think kids would love to hear. But something We could talk like about that. contemplation of, my, of death, yeah, COD. Yeah. Um, but wow. but you know what I mean, Toby? Like, so that was like, so then it's kind of like anything's possible. You know what I mean? Yeah. And you don't need anything except you never felt like giving up in music. You never felt any of that stuff. You just kept uh-huh. going no matter what. Yeah. Giving up. Even stop. before well, sobriety, through sobriety, you've been through yeah, so much shit. Yeah, I got that shit, the guitar right there. See that guy? Yeah. I've had that for thirty something years. Damn. My old offender, and I've took that on Operation Ivy too. I was like, it's a miracle it's still with me. That's a piece of history right here. I'm looking at, and it's it's yeah the, the original uh, whatever like the Hellcat original. But yeah. it's like it's, and um as long as I got that man, I'm cool, man. Like, I well, don't I'm, I don't need any you know I don't need any fame or radio or just I'm just gonna I'm gonna be playing music. To the very last day. Yeah, you're playing music before and after that. You know yeah. what I mean? Like it's like I just love playing music. But but just speaking as a fan, I was so happy when I saw you guys' videos and heard you on the radio. I was so happy because oh, you're my you. friends. You know what thank I mean? You. And like, I want all my friends to succeed. I'm happy when all my friends do good, and I was so happy for that. And because of what happened with Rancid and a lot of the bands in that time, it only paved the way and helped for bands like H2O who still get to play music too. You know what I mean? Like, so I, I appreciate that. And shit, I guess that's pretty much it. I mean, we talked about a lot of shit. Um, um, I'm, I'm I'm super honored to call you my friend. I'm super proud of you. Everything you've done. And it's still in my life and what you did for my band and your sobriety and your positivity and your creativity, your inspiration to me. And um, yeah, man. And you too, man. Like you've never done drugs. That's an, a drink. Hi, yeah. That's no. incredible. Thank you, man. And you I'm want, just a spaz. I was just a hyper, hyper, hyperactive spaz. Whatever. Yeah, but you're like the most free, like positive person I know, man. 
and you don't ever did drugs or drink. Like that's so, people should take take notice of that. You know what I mean? Thank you. There's bro. a lesson there to be learned, for real. Yeah, I guess you you don't really need to have that stuff to to uh, to be high in life. I guess you know. Mm-hmm. Um. Well, thank you, Tim. I think this is a great way to end the podcast. I appreciate having you on here. Yeah. Um, who knows who's listening? Because I haven't released any of these yet. We'll see what, what happens. What about club? What about clubs? You had your CBs. We had we had Gilman Street. Dude, yeah. So well, shit. Gilman Street's still open. It's like the last standing. I would say Discord and the Gilman Street are the last standing punk thing. And <laughs> I said this to Brett the other day. So it's Epitaph Records, actual physical building. It's not just an online record label. Discord Records, and then Gilman Street, the three pretty much last standing yeah. places. You think? It's a it's a miracle. I it's can't. amazing. But it's like, yeah, I mean. The Discord shit, and like he was talking about that, he said that him and Ian Mackay will be the only, to the day they die, they will never sell the label to anybody. Yes, who just have their labels. And, and, and I, I love Ian, by the way, also. Best. I love Brett Gerowitz, and I love Ian, but I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm I'm California, so it's like, you know, at one point, <laughs> Ian tried to, he talked to me about moving out to, after Operation Ivy. Yeah. He said, like, you should move out to D.C. Wow. And I was like, um. I remember he told me that. Yeah, that's a yeah. good idea, but like. You know, he, he says you'd be you know you're like a DC homie. You should move out. And I go, man, I love all you guys. I love all the DC bands as I love the New York bands. And I collect all those records. Yeah, my threat, fuck. Oh, of course, all of them. Oh, so Scream, much. Scream, Void, Gazi, Faith, Teen Idols, Void, Beef Eater, yeah, Egg Hunt, Egg Hunt, Palehead, Palehead. Okay, so <laughs> Embrace, oh, Embrace yeah. is the best. Right to Spring, OG emo. Mm-hmm. That's the OG emo right there. Would you say? Yeah, yeah. Original Summer of Love could be the first the first real emo record. It huh? is, man. Yeah. I saw Embrace once and they were throwing out flowers and the singer for Beefy was naked and he stage dived. Mm. It was crazy at 9.30 Club. Okay. I like when you have coffee. Can we keep talking tonight? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, we're talking about Gilman Street. Gilman Street, uh, Epitaph, oh, Discord. It, yeah, Brett and, G- Brett, Brett and Ian are like, they're kind of similar too. Yeah. Huh, you know what I mean? They both Super were great too. bands. Great bands. And they built labels off that great band. DIY shit, yeah. They're both uncompromising. Uncompromising. And both super like Hello, smarter than me. <laughs> the only thing Brett like said, smart the only Brett said he doesn't care about making a T-shirt with a band logo on. That's the only difference he has. Is that I don't have to put that in there. But he said he he doesn't mind capitalism. If a band can make a buck off a shirt, I can make a buck. You know, everybody yeah. makes money with a T-shirt. But Ian was against making. Yeah, they have their own. I respect like, that. Their, their own aesthetics, their yeah. own approach. But they're both like very similar. And they never give in. I'm sure they got offered to get bought so much money by so many fucking people back then, dude. Brett said so many people like just fucking vultures coming. I know. Trying to buy that label, and they wouldn't give it up. He said, "He said if he sold it, he couldn't sleep at night." And that also shows you what kind of person he is, also, man. Yeah. Like, I couldn't go to bed enough if I made all that money. Like, he's he's so not industry. Like him and Ian, they're so not typical industry people because actually care. They come from music and they care about it. Like he's like, Bad Relation was going to put out. I don't know if he said maybe No Effects or something. Like I like your band. Like, sign in my label. Like. I'm in bad religion. We're friends. Like just the whole thing is really family vibe. You know, I, I think that's awesome. And that, that thing is what separates punk from a lot of everything. You know, mm-hmm. like it's just this connection. That's not fake industry shit. It's just real. This dude's trying to, like you said, like you don't really need anybody because shit, if I can get in this maximum rock and roll and even mention my band, I did that just by doing that in my, in my brother's bedroom. Like yeah. you don't need anybody to, to do it. If you believe in yourself and you can play music and you have exactly. a passion, that's all you need. Basically, that pretty much. When we fit, we met Ian in 1988 at the, at, the, at the Rhode Island show. I thought you were at that show. Fuck. What, t- what year was it? The Rocket at the, uh, uh, 1988. I lived in New York. Then. I don't think I was like, there, it was though. It like April 88. The Rocket. Yeah, I remember that. Verbal Assault, Fugazi, and Operation Ivy. I missed that. Are you serious? Do yeah. I lived in New York then, too? Yeah. I had just moved from, I moved from Rhode Island because I knew Verbal Assault before that. Damn, that's a and sick Ian, uh, show, dude. We toured in, in Matt's uh, 1969 Newport, so it was like five of us in a car sick. with a box on the roof with, with, for equipment. My dad built a box to put the equipment, and um, Ian, Ian, we saw him across the street, and he sees us, and he starts walking across the street oh, at us. We're like, oh, oh shit, Ian. here he is. That's crazy. And um, and I love Minor Threat, but I yeah, I was out of town when they played. Like, I missed him. Yeah, I'm sure, yeah, I'm sure that you were around for that. Yeah, yeah, yeah I loved him. But we were um, damn. We were so I missed it by a threat when they played. But Fugazi um, was something else too. But Fugazi. So Ian walks across the street, and he says, "You're Operation Ivy, right?" And we're like, "Yeah." He goes, "Man, you are some bold motherfuckers touring in a car." 
<laughs> on the West Coast. That sounds like something he told yeah. me to say, too. You know what I mean? That's what the first thing he said to us. Wow. And yeah, we hit it off, too, with him. You know, he's been my friend ever since. That's fucking awesome, man. Um, some bold motherfuckers. Tw- yeah, you guys are some bold motherfuckers. But that's it. He's like, fuck. And then, uh, I know, like, 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 uh, but you know, that was his 26th birthday. Fuck. I really? remember being like, yo, that dude's 26. Crazy. Yeah, it's you know crazy. what I mean? Yeah. But you know what's crazy about that is that, like, you, even just other bands, like, you're not much that older than me, and neither is Ian to you. Yeah. But back then, yeah. you look at these dudes, like, these guys, like, these look up yeah. to these dudes. It's not different. Yeah. It's weird. Yeah. Same with the pro skaters. Like, a lot of people are like, I saw in magazines and shit, like, but now I'm like, oh, shit, only a couple years older. But yeah, Ian, Ian Mackay, like, he's, he's one of my, I, I would, yeah, he's one of the, one of the greatest, man, you know? Mm-hmm. Examples of, uh, punk rock and everything um all right well tim well thank you so much we covered a lot of things thank you for having me fuck man thank you for being you um congrats on everything you've done in your life and continue to do and And keep inspiration and that you know it's it's been an honor to be your friend man all these years thank you bro you're always my big brother man even though you're not much older than me i realize now (laughs) you're still my big brother and um fuck if i hadn't met you guys when i was already was sick of it all who knows whatever happened moving forward with my band or anything it just all this shit happens for a reason, you know, and um, I'm honored to be there during that time and s- watch you guys' success and all that shit and see you guys be the exact same people you were before and anything that's happened to you, and I love that. Um, you guys are real cats. Um, forever one of my favorite bands. I have, like, five rancid tattoos. But I'll get off your dick now. Um, <laughs> but I love you, Tim, and thanks for, thanks for being on here. And um, Love you too, brother. Yeah, man. Thanks for listening, everybody, for this, this podcast. That was Tim Armstrong, uh, my brother from Another Mother. Um, signing off now. Bye. That was great. Dope. That was great. So happy, dude. <clears throat> That's gonna be kind of like my mo. Where after I do the interview, I wait and I realize, oh shit, I, c- I had more questions for them. So usually there's gonna be some extra stuff at the end of all my episodes. It's kind of like the theme or whatever I'm doing. I'm sorry, I'm just a spaz and I don't get all the questions I need to. And uh, sometimes I f- just like OCD and bug out on the what I could have, should have asked them, and I get them back on the phone. And so one one of the stories that I forgot to talk to you about. Uh, and we talked about before on your pod, on your show, on your radio show a while ago, um, is um, is the story of, of at City Gardens and the hairspray story and, and the blow dryer, and that's a famous story. Um, <laughs> and, and we told it before, but I want to tell it here because people have heard it before. But at that, so if everybody listening, Rancid and H Tour just met at this show in Jersey. Pretty much was the first kind of time we kind of they played shows together, and I was a roadie for sick of it all, and. Um, Obviously, you know, people on the West Coast have their have the stuff that have their vibe and, and East Coast do, too. And there was definitely this New York kind of tough thing that that New York had around it for a very, very long time. Um, and so I think it's and, and Tim had been, been supporting the Revelation Records and loving all the different types of music and supporting the hardcore and and, and loving that scene. Yeah. And, 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 and I've been writing letters to the to, to Lou and Pete. Sick of it all. That's amazing. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, that's fucking crazy. We were, we had like a, we, we were like a, a correspondence, uh, old school, like, <laughs> you know, that. like letters. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah, like pen, yeah. Pen so there's a mutual respect between, uh, the, the, between Rancid and, and Sick of it all, you know? Yeah. So, even before we played together, you know? So, yeah. So then you finally get to meet kind of real life because just like this, it was like sending letters kind of thing. But Lars was debating to put his hair, like Lars, every, he, Rich, you know, I, I put my mohawk up, but, but Lars, Real, you know, it was a ritual for him to spike his charge out his his blonde hair, right? Yeah. And it show time's getting closer, and he hasn't charged his hair up, and uh, and we just met all you guys. <laughs> 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 so yeah. Lars is like, "Yo, do I charge my hair up with my blow dryer and hairspray in front of all these?" Yeah, I was just like, yeah, New York friends. yeah, we're like in the other room. That was a dilemma. <laughs> <laughs> and I, you know what's so crazy? I never even knew it meant charge. That's the first time I ever heard somebody say charge your hair up. I guess that was a term back then. It's like just spike your hair, you charge it up. Yeah. That's amazing. So yeah, so a bunch of bunch of like tattooed, loud, but we were having fun in the other room. I don't know what the hell we were doing. Yeah, and you realize that like, dude, these guys are just down to earth dudes. They're not like freak whatever, whatever, whatever the the stigma was about the New York car or whatever. And then fuck it. I'm going to fucking put, I'm going to put my hair up and he put his hair up. Right. Didn't he do it? Yeah. Yeah. And nobody's going to uh, clown. No, right but it, shit. Yeah. It's awesome. No, I know. But it was an issue. Uh, uh, <laughs> something, to, something to think about. Yeah. 
Um, Without really knowing. Well, what, what, yeah. what happened was, well, okay, so here's what happened. So he puts his hair up so you guys couldn't see. And then like a, uh, like a, like a, <laughs> six months later, we were like, yo, Lars was like, I thought you guys would clown me. So I, I kind of hid and oh, put my hair up. Friends, that's right. Yeah. And, and then you guys were like, and you, and you, you guys were like, yeah, we would have clowned you for sure, bro. <laughs> no doubt about it. <laughs> oh my God. That's so he's like, Lars amazing. hid, Lars hid from you, dude. Lars hid from all you guys. Damn. And put his hair up. You know? That's amazing, man. I don't give it. I mean, that's he's just a... doing his thing, you know. Yeah. And you're doing your thing. Yeah. That was what, and the, but the, you know what? That's how we. That's how it was, and everyone respected each other. You know, and that's for sure. Yeah, you I know? Like, yeah, I like what you. I mean, the first time Operation Ivy toured was in '88, and we were told by everybody, "Don't play New York proper because it's too hard," and they won't. Yeah, and, and they and they they wouldn't get Operation Ivy, which is crazy because Operation Ivy is probably most popular in New York or yeah. whatever, whatever. Yeah most popular cities so people got it wrong they underestimated new york man i mean back then they didn't realize that you know that you guys are doing your own thing it didn't mean that you guys weren't open-minded to other people's yeah lives. and that's 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 the truth you know what i mean like so i wish operation ivy played new york city we played new jersey wow. we played anthrax in connecticut we played all around uh, new york but we didn't play new york you that's know? crazy and, i never uh, knew that man that's crazy yeah yeah we were told by everybody you know like like don't 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 even you know don't go to new york they won't get operation ivy and i was sad because i was a huge fan of new york music new york hardcore i mean <sighs> new york hardcore and of course going yeah. back to like the ramones and all that yeah so i was like no way we can't play new york fuck how's that you know, and we didn't do it but in retrospect, we should have. Kids and they would have loved got, it. You yeah, know, it would have been guys awesome. Got us. Yeah. Yeah, it would have been awesome. What year was if that If I go again? back to a time machine, yeah. is there a time machine we can do this? I would go back and have Operation Ivy play in New York. New York, if we could have a time machine. But you know what I mean? Yeah. I wish I could go back in a time machine. You know what's crazy is that that was before the internet, too. So that was a straight, like, rumors through the scene. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? That wasn't, mm -hmm. like, nothing you read. It was just like, oh, shit. There were, like, all these fucking, That's right. these myths and these, like, wow, man. Um, yeah, and then one more thing I realized too. I did some more. I did this looking at more stuff because we talked about so much. Is that I didn't realize that Electric Lady Studios was where Combat Rock was done. Was that was that something kind of inspired you guys to do the record there? Honestly, it was like the only stu like the the, the the we we were we were under the gun to finish that record, right? Yeah, and it was yeah. a Brett Gerwitz call because what happened was we we finished. Um, our time with Jerry Finn a month and we hadn't done the vocals yet. Okay. And he'd already booked time to do jawbreaker record. Oh, wow. So, and we had Andy Wallace mixed dates booked and we had a small window to finish the vocals. So we were, we booked electric Ladyland to, um, to finish the vocals. Um, okay. Literally the day before they're going to be mixed wow. song by song. So Brett Gerwitz, Lars Fredericks and I were finishing out the both vocals Next day, there are two songs being mixed by Annie Wallace. So we're doing like two songs a day. That's crazy. Um, yeah, man. it was exciting. But I yeah, see. it was totally under the gun. And, and the girl, and it was just more of a, a combat rock. But a lot of records done there too. Though. So like, many records. I looked into it. Yeah, dude. It's yeah. So much history. But um, but that was it, man. And we were just like, but that's part of the excitement of that record, where it's like we we were we were just under the gun to finish it, and um, yeah. we were just because what happened was we did let's go in four days. So, so Jerry Finn was like, fuck, four days. And this is his first record Jerry Finn ever produced. Oh, wow. Was, he'd mixed the Green Day record, but he yeah. never, but I was like, loved the Green Day record mixed so much. I was like, would you like to produce Rancid? Like, we were the first band for him that he ever produced just off of his, and he's a really bright, he's really bright, and, and, and yeah. uh, I love the way the Green Day record sounded. Yeah. So, he was like, um, fuck, man, they did, they did Let's Go in, in four days, in f five days out the door. Shit, these kids can bang a, it out. A month would be plenty of time. Yeah, yeah. But he was so meticulous with the rhythm section, which is one of Jerry's strengths. Was yeah, the drums and the bass connected. He was he 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 rode our rhythm section so hard and was so detailed with them that it pushed everything back. And by the time we were out of time, and he'd already booked Jawbreaker at the same studio, Fantasy Studio in, in Berkeley. Wow. Um, which is where the you know Credence did their record. Yeah, you know, yeah, that was like, yeah. a great old studio. Yeah, and um, that we ran out of time. Literally, Man, did not hadn't crazy. done vocals yet in our, wow. and we had booked you know so. 
So Brett did the vocals. Uh, he produced that, the vocals yeah. of that pretty much. You told me that before. Yeah, he produced the, yeah. Brett recorded and produced all the vocals, which I think he's he's my favorite vocal producer, you know. Yeah. Uh I mean, you know, bad religion. I mean, come on, right? Yeah, I mean, of Brett course. knows of course. how to produce. Yeah, man. And it, for me, it's, it's super fun because I'll sing the song three times and I go, have, you know, and then I'll go like have, have a, you know, a cup of coffee or something. Yeah. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And then he'll, he'll pick one of my vocals and then comp in the, uh, if, if there's a, he needs to fix something, but he pretty much rides one of my, one of my vocals. And then, um, and that's it for me. That's super fun. And I don't have to think about it. So, yeah. and then he does, he's great with harmony. He's like, he's singing harmony on, on most of those records. Like he's like him and Lars do a lot of the harmonies yeah, it's amazing, on all the records. I love Brett yeah. Norris, man. Um, so, that, so yeah, he has them too, and he's he's my favorite producer to work with, and he does all our records, and I feel honored that it works. He's part of that crew, and it's it's making Ransom Records is like you know family reunion. We get together, and get to do that. We get to do that thing we do together. You know, it's yeah. it's, it's special. You know, and it works. It gels. Work. You guys work great together. You know. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, man. we all and we all listen to them. You know, because Matt Freeman's a strong personality. Yep. Right. And so is Lars. And then, you know, him, you know, I got opinions. So, but we all listen to Brett. You know what I mean? Yeah. There's a a mutual respect there for like respect, you know what I mean? His opinions and everything. It's awesome. And then Mm -hmm. the the final thing, I know we talked about it briefly too, is that I don't even know if you remember this because was this a day, but I I was just wondering, did anybody ever, how I ended up in the time bomb video, I'm wondering, did anybody ever show up like dressed up with a black coat and the white shoes and black hat? Did anybody ever show up that day? (laughs) No, I'm serious. Like, was there somebody hired to be that person? And then, and then when I came, I was your boy. So I I was just wondering, that guy, would that guy ever come? Like, I don't know how that changed. It was crazy. No, you just, yeah, you just were the guy, you were like the guy, you were like, you know, you, uh, you embodied the <laughs> spirit of punk. Yeah, Come yeah, on, yeah. Right? No, thank you. No, I was one of the guy even came there. I was one of the guys who showed up like that because I had none of that shit on, but it just worked. <laughs> it just worked with like my dickies, and it's just awesome. Um, nah, but it was it was this. Well, you know, we started shooting you, and then it was just like, yo, this is the piece. It's working. You know, he's the guy. Yeah. Well, I think I think that's. But it's fun to see yeah. like all you know all my friends in that video. Yeah, I love dude. that video. Love that video so much, man. It's such an honor. Um, I think we talk about everything. I think I'm gonna, I think I'll do a part two with you one day. Where we just talk about music, strictly music, hip hop, yeah. punk rock, everything, like all the different stuff. We well, remember, like with, with, with my with our radio show, um, that, um, you were kind of like you've been on like four t- more than anybody. You were like <laughs> yeah. on like four times. Yeah, you know what I mean. So yeah, I'd love to be the Toby Moore. To Toby Morris of your show. You know? Thank you. I love that Thank too, you. man. I think it'd be great. We get we gotta do one like me, you, Jim, and Reno would do like a Ramones one. It would be awesome. Yeah. That we should do that. I think that's the move. That'll yeah. have to be like five parts. I think. But, but <laughs> and then then one just on hip hop with you because I I know people know you love everything, but you're really the hip hop. You you know all your hip hop yeah. and I think it'd be really interesting. Hip-hop. Yeah, to hear you talk about that like a different genre and stuff. Yeah. Um. I love I love not, you know I love all eras of hip hop. You know what I mean? I know, like, man. You the different different the regional state. areas. Yeah. Labels. Yeah, I love it so much. I could talk about hip. I love hip hop. Um. I love music, Toby. You know what I mean? I so know, like. Man. Whatever. It's your life, dude. It's fucking uh, amazing. It's my life. All right, well, I appreciate you too, man. I appreciate it, Tim. I think we have a, a th- great, great in, uh, episode. I'm excited. Then we'll definitely do a part two. And I just want to get these last questions in. Cool. And I appreciate your support with everything I've done. Appreciate you being my friend and all that stuff, man. Yeah, man. No, I love you, man. And you're my family for life, for real, Toby. You know what I mean? I, like, 100%. My big brother. Man. 100%, brother. All right, bro. I know, man. And, you know, let's go to Magpies. Hell yeah. <laughs> Shout out to Magpies. <laughs> I'm excited for this podcast to get out, man. Thanks for being part of it too and believing in me. I'll see what happens when it's a yeah. get out there and you know. Um for exciting. sure. All right, brother. Thank you so right, much. Well hit me Tim. up if you need anything else. I, will, I mean, man. I'll, I'm down to do another quick phone call if you need me. You know right, what I mean? Bro- I really appreciate it, Tim. All right, brother. All right, All right. Bye. Bye. I'll talk to you soon. Bye. 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 Hey guys, thanks for listening. Um please rate, review. Uh, subscribe if you haven't subscribed yet to this podcast please do that and whatever platform you are listening to this on i'm glad you found me you can rate me and review me on there also so thank you guys sincerely for the support i cannot wait for you guys to the next one